Hello, <coughs> hello everyone. Uh, let's start this uh, Big Data Boutique uh, Ask Me uh, Anything uh, session. Uh, today we are going to speak about Kafka and Pulsar, uh, about uh, message brokers uh, and the difference between them and, and their architecture. So we are going to cover uh, many features of both uh, projects. Uh, just remember, if you have any question, uh, just you have the chat here. I see some uh, messages coming. Uh, that's great. So feel free to write uh, messages in the chat and as soon as possible, I will try to answer the questions or to share my experience uh, regarding both brokers. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you can also send uh, the questions if you prefer to the email. That's perfectly fine. Uh, whatever you prefer, it's, it's okay for me. Um, so today we are going to discuss uh, Kafka and Pulsar. <clears throat> uh, the idea is to do a comparison of uh, both uh, technologies and try to explain uh, when it's better to use one or another one. Okay, uh, Kafka is uh, a lot more popular uh, than Pulsar. The level of adoption it's uh, really high nowadays. Uh, uh, in this graph, uh, measuring the, the maturity and the adoption of both technologies, as you can see, Kafka, it's already in the late majority and, or even in the laggards uh, part, right? It's using many, many companies um, and we see it as a, a, a key component of every uh, big data architecture, okay? Uh, Pulsar, it's, uh, uh, it's newer and the adoption is not so wide as with Kafka. It has, it's, it's being used for some big companies out there and probably the graphic, it's, the diagram is not right because probably it's after uh, the champs, it's, it's hard to say, or even in the middle of the champs, we, we are not sure about that. Uh, but for sure it's a stable uh, technology, it's used for big companies and it's growing in adoption. It was uh, open sourced by Yahoo specifically to address uh, some of the problems we have with Kafka. We'll cover that later. So uh, let's start uh, to compare both technologies. Let's go deeper with them and try to understand how they work and their architecture. Okay, so let's just start with Kafka because <clears throat> most of the things in Pulse are based uh, or are done in that way to solve Kafka limitations. So with Kafka, basically what we have, it's a broker. So this is Kafka itself. And we have a consumer, uh, sorry, a producer, which is uh, writing or producing messages to uh, our Kafka broker. Basically, this broker is storing those messages in local storage or depending on your configuration, it, it may be a uh, network storage, but mo the most typical thing is a local storage here. Um, um, and this is basically what is uh, Kafka doing, right? The nice thing about Kafka is it's going to store those messages, but to have high availability, it's going to copy those messages to other brokers. So we may have here a broker one, Broker two and broker three. So the producer puts the message in broker two and broker two copy the message to broker one and to uh, broker three. So if we have a problem with broker two, it's we are not going to lose that data because it's replicated in broker one and in broker three. Okay, so this is basically the lock, uh, a distributed lock, right? That's what basically Kafka is. This producer or other producers ca can also produce in broker one and in broker three. And the information is going to be uh, replicated between brokers. So we make sure we never lose data if we lose uh, any broker. Okay, uh, basically to do that, what we do is the, the topic where we store the information, we uh, copy that, uh, we split that information in something which is called uh, partitions. 
So basically we have one partition, another partition. So basically our information is split in that way. Um, all other partition. And what we have is the information replicated. So in the broker one, we may have the uh, copy or the replica of this uh, partition. Here we may have the replica for free. And here we, we have the replica two, okay? So if we lose broker one, because the leader, the replica leader one, it's replicated um, here, sorry, this was wrong. Uh, we don't lose data and the continue and the service can continually work. Okay. We have, of course, our uh, consumers. So we may have several instances of one consumer, consumer one, consumer two, consumer three. These are part of the same applications, but the several different instances are typically a group grouped in a consumer group. So consumer one, it's reading from the, uh, the replica one, consumer two from the replica three, consumer three from the replica uh, from the leader three. Uh, and that's basically what it gives us is, is parallelization, parallelization, okay? There are, there are different network connections and we can scale to have many, many consumers. If, for example, a consumer three goes down, consumer two can take their place and start to work from, uh, uh, to read from the leader three. And we are not going to lose uh, service, right? The thing is, if we have consumer four, for example, Uh, and we have also consumer free. So let's come back here to the previous situation. We have consumer free reading from here. Consumer four can't read from Kafka because there is any partition available. Okay. So this is very important to, to know if you don't have enough partitions in advance, new instances or your application can consume from Kafka. So you need to scale up your uh, consumer. You need to add more partitions, which is not straightforward. Okay. There are some workarounds or some strategies we can use, but they are not uh, provided out of the box. There are some kind of tricky. Okay, so that's one of the problems we have with uh, Kafka. Uh, being able to scale up, scale down the consumers and being able to scale up, scale down the brokers, which is exactly the same thing. If we uh, add a new broker here, we need to manually move uh, the replicas to the new broker and then uh, interrupt the consumers to start to read from the new broker. And that's not something easy to do, okay? So those are uh, uh, two uh, quite the big problems uh, in working with Kafka, things you really need to know and how to work with them. There is just <clears throat> one uh, piece I, uh, I didn't explain, it's Zookeeper. So we have uh, Zookeeper, typically we have several instances Zookeeper, one, two, and three, to do the coordinations between the brokers, okay, to help to do all the, the distributed configuration stuff. Zookeeper is disappearing from Kafka. It will be probably replaced by the broker itself this year, but until now, you need to have Zookeeper too. So you need to deploy the, the brokers and you need to deploy Zookeeper. They are totally different technologies and you need to learn how to operate both of them. Okay. And that's the reason why uh, the Kafka community is pushing uh, to eliminate Zookeeper from the architecture to make things easier and not have to uh, maintain two different systems. Okay. So this is basically uh, the Kafka uh, architecture. Uh, as 
and, and, and we see uh, what problems they have. So how a Pulsar solves those problems, okay? So for Pulsar, the architecture starts in a very, very similar way. We have again our producer, which is producing to a broker, a Pulsar broker in this case. So it's sending the messages to broker. But the broker in this case is stateless. That's mean, that means it's not storing the information, okay? Uh, what it's going to do is to connect a different piece, call it, call it bookkeeper or bookie, to store that, in, that message, okay? So bookie or bookkeeper, it's where we have the storage, okay? Uh, basically, what that's that's great because we can have different bookkeepers in this case so we can just man, uh, send the information to different bookkeepers the the bad thing about this is we have like two network hubs one from the producer to the broker and one for the brokers to the bookkeeper but the nice thing is now if we need we can just add new bookkeepers so we can scale bookkeepers quite easily bookkeeper four with their own storage and we can add also quite easily uh new brokers so broker one uh, broker two and broker free okay so if we have high load we can just add more brokers if we have less load we can just uh, go down because they are stateless that's not uh, a problem at all okay so that's the first and probably the most important difference with uh, with kafka it's the broker it's stateless we can scale down, scale up the broker, the bookies, the information is split in segments. So segment one, segment two, for example, with there are replicas in other bookkeepers. So we have replica one, replica three. But we can uh, put that information in every bookkeeper. It's going to be a storage in two, um, two keeper. And um, it doesn't matter, we can scale this uh, up and down without too much uh, problems, okay? <clears throat> the other component we have is two keeper in the, selling, in the same way as we have with Kafka for all the distribution, uh, distributed uh, configuration. Uh, but in the case of Pulsar, it's even more used and it's not going anywhere, okay? Pulsar is, uh, as far as I know, is always, always going to be to have these three different components, the broker, bookkeeper, shoekeeper, okay? So you need to maintain these three, uh, uh, three different type of uh, services, okay? And finally, we have uh, our consumers. So we may have consumer one, Consumer two and consumer three, and what is nice in Pulsar is we can add new consumers easily, or go or scale down consumers, and we are not going to have uh, so much, uh, so many problems as we have with Kafka, okay? Because it's going, they are going to connect to the broker to receive to retrieve the data so they are not going to affect once each other okay and they are not going to be uh, limited by the number of partitions there are also partitions in pulsar if you want to use them because of uh, parallelization and so on but they are not uh, so important as they are in in kafka okay so basically this is the the architecture uh, let's do a uh, I'll wrap up and, and see some of the questions in this point. So, as I said, this is the, the, the nice diagram. 
we have the brokers, we have leaders and replicas, we have consumers. The main problem is we don't, we cannot easily scale up, scale down the brokers. We cannot easily scale up, scale down the consumers. Okay. With the pulse architecture, it's just a bit different because there is uh, the bookkeeper in the in the middle. It's an uh, uh, additional layer, so we can um, easily scale up, scale out the brokers, and there are also supported more uh, advanced partners in the consuming side. So it, it's easy to scale out, scale up the consumer or to implement different uh, patterns of consumption okay let me uh, check because i see a question from uh, gustavo if you have a new broker does the new broker address get broadcast to the clients or the clients need to know about the new broker beforehand yeah that's a good uh, question the, basically with the consumer or, or the producer it's connecting to kafka it can connect to uh, every broker out there so, uh, and that broker is going to uh, consult in Zookeeper the list of available brokers and it's going to return it to Kafka. Uh, sorry, to the consumer, to the producer, to the client. Okay. So, if you are a new broker, uh, the consumer, the producer, they are not going to know that uh, by default. But that broker, um, initially, there is not going to have any partition. So uh, what it's going to do is eventually it will uh, start to have partitions or you can move partitions manually to that broker. And in some point, those consumers producers are going to refresh the list of brokers because they are going to receive uh, from uh, the controller, just connect to this partition in this particular broker and things are going to start to flow. Okay, so it's more or less uh, automatic, okay, uh, but it's not a simple process. Okay. Well, there is another question from Marcel. How you can uh, maintain only one semantics if you are doing scaling? Well, uh, only one semantics are kind of uh, complex or very complex. Uh, in 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 Kafka, it's possible to have them even scaling up, scaling down the the consumers. Okay, so if you are um, uh, configuring uh, the producer, uh, zookeeper, and the consumer to have uh, slightly one semantics, even if you are adding or, uh, or adding new brokers. On new consumer, uh, it should keep the exactly one semantics, but it's a lot more problematic. So you are mixing two things which are not easy in Kafka, exactly once and scale scale uh, dynamically. Okay, so it's possible there are that you may face some corner cases and some specific uh, problems where you uh, lose the exactly one semantics. Uh, but uh, well, it should work. I what what I always recommend to everybody is try to avoid exactly one semantics if you have to use uh, Kafka. Okay, uh, it's possible to do it, but in many cases it's better just to try to implement that, uh, like uh, make your make your consumers impotent and have like an ID, uh, auto incremental ID produced by the producer just to avoid to uh, rely in Kafka for that particular things, okay? Uh, and if you really need to do a scale, you really need to scale your cluster often, it is going to be uh, very, very painful. And maybe even uh, take a look to other technology like MQs may uh, have more sense uh, than to use Kafka for this, okay, Marcel? Okay, no more questions until here. So uh, let's continue. Uh, just uh, let me know if the answers are helpful. I'm also happy to listen if you disagree with me. It's always nice to to learn from you. So uh, let's move. Uh, well, we, we are covering here uh, Kafka Pulse Architecture. So the m first thing, uh, important thing to note is uh, Kafka it has two different types of components, the broker and Zookeeper. And Zookeeper will be removed in the future. Pulsar has broker, Zookeeper, and Bookkeeper. 
So that's a good point for Kafka because it's uh, less components, less uh, network hops. So uh, the latency it should be bet uh, better, okay? Because you don't have to rely on the network two times. And in general, the footprint is a bit uh, smaller, okay, for, for Kafka, because uh, each component needs to be high av available. Um, it's different, it's totally different uh, how you manage uh, the broker from shoekeeper, from bookkeeper, they are independent uh, projects. They have some similarities, all of them work uh, over the GBM. I mean, they're not just absolutely different, okay? But it's not as uh, simple as when you are just manage, managing one type of, of system, okay? But uh, in the other hand, what we have with Pulsar is more flexible consumer uh, patterns. So we are not going to impact our consumers if we are scaling up, scaling down the consumers. It's easier to scale if we need to add more brokers or more storage. And in general, both things means it's uh, easier for, uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, so if you want to use uh, Kubernetes, uh, typic with Pulsar, you can really take advantage of the things uh, which uh, Kubernetes provides. Uh, there are many people who uh, talk to me, they want to use Kafka in Kubernetes and, and just it's perfectly possible. There are some operators out of there which are quite mature. Uh, but the thing of deploy Kafka with, in Kubernetes is you are not really having any advantage uh, respecting to deploy it in virtual machines because you cannot scale up, scale down uh, the cluster basic thing in your uh, load and you cannot uh, restart uh, the broker when you have problems or just delete it and create it again because that would be hugely problematic uh, for Kafka. Uh, so you don't have the good things of which Kubernetes gives you, but you have a new layer and a lot of complexity to, to manage. Okay, so uh, you, if you really want to use Kafka, it's because you are using Kafka for absolutely everything as a standard in your company and you cannot uh, use virtual machines. But if it's not the case, uh, Kafka, uh, Kubernetes in Kafka doesn't add too much value and adds a lot of problems. Uh, with Pulsar, it's a bit different because with Pulsar, you can have uh, some of those nice things Kafka uh, Pul uh, Kubernetes gives to you. So that may have uh, make more sense. Okay. Uh, let me see, I see another question. How is the daily queue managed in Pulsars versus Kafka? Well, uh, the little queues in Kafka, you can have them, but it's not a, a so common pattern as it is with, um, uh, with, uh, with an MBQ. Okay. Uh, basically, if the producer can't uh, write to Kafka, there is no way to use a daily queue in Kafka, right? You have to just process it in, in the other place. If you uh, are in the consumer side and you are uh, consuming messages and uh, some error happens, uh, most of the time what you do is to uh, restart the, law, the, um, the offset. So don't update the offset to reprocess the message instead of using a uh, daily queue. And yes, in some cases, if you are not able to process the message, you can write to uh, a daily queue, okay? But uh, it's not as um, much common pattern as we have with MQs, okay? In the case of Pulsar, it's kind of uh, similar to Kafka, but Pulsar, yes, provides some uh, patterns cons consumption similar to MQ, so you can and may have daily queues in Pulsar. If you are looking to daily queues and, uh, and that type of stuff, which is not uh, so suitable for Kafka, uh, maybe Pulsar, because it has these more flexible consumer patterns and, and you can uh, have different uh, ways to consume to Kafka, not only the consumer group uh, as we have in, 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 in Kafka, uh, it, it may be better, okay? So thank you, uh, Jose Enrique. Let's uh, continue. Uh, well, some advanced features you may need, okay? The first one is uh, TRF storage. 
Tiered structs basically is uh, you are putting your information in Kafka or in Pulsar and directly from Kafka, from Pulsar, you want to uh, replicate that information to uh, S3 or a server of storage or any object uh, storage in the cloud. Okay, that's a very interesting use case, very useful uh, because you are not limited by the uh, size of your hard disk, of your local storage, because you can just uh, move some information uh, to the cloud and retrieve it when needed. Okay, so this is a very, very interesting concept uh, and very useful. That is also nice because you can just uh, use uh, Kafka or Pulsar to put information in the cloud and then some uh, analytical process or uh, any other business logic and read directly from, uh, from the cloud, from S3, to process that information instead of doing it, for example, in, in Kafka or Pulsar if they are on-prem. Okay, so there are some interesting uh, use cases for this. Uh, Pulsar uh, had this for a while, and I would say it's more mature uh, than Kafka on that. It supports uh, several uh, object storage, not only S3, um, and, and it's part of the product. So I think it will it's better. In the case of Kafka, uh, it's quite new. It was launched uh, the previous year. And right now, as far as I know, it's only uh, as part of a commercial product and not Kafka itself. So you can have that, uh, but it's not uh, open source, as far as I know. Uh, I think that's it's coming uh, to Kafka, to Apache Kafka, uh, but it's not uh, yet there. The other nice, uh, or the other important thing, is jail replication. Uh, basically, it's the ability to have uh, several uh, Kafka clusters in different clouds or in different data centers and uh, being able to combine them. Uh, again, Pulsar was uh, it's better on this. It supports different configuration, like uh, to have an active standby um, cluster distribution a full mesh when all the clusters are uh, active and um, replicating information between them and also the edge uh, distribution where we have uh, some pulsar clusters in the edge which are aggregating uh, the, the data in the core uh, cluster okay so all of them are uh, fully supported out of the box uh, by pulsar in the case of kafka it's a lot more complex okay if the open source as part of Kafka, we have uh, Mirror Maker 2, which is basically in Kafka Connect, which is a way to uh, send information from one cluster to another one. You can use this to uh, build some kind of uh, geo replication. Uh, it's perfectly possible, uh, I did it in the past, but it's also uh, very, very tricky. It's uh, hard to maintain. Um, and in general, uh, it relies on Kafka Connect. Uh, it's not uh, it's not perfect. Let me say that way. And it's quite costly in terms of uh, operation and maintenance. We have also some commercial uh, options. Uh, Replicator. It's uh, kind of similar to Mirror Maker 2. It's also based in Kafka Connect. Uh, it's a bit better. Have some more features. But uh, it has exactly the same problems. It's basically in, in Kafka Connect, and it's quite hard to maintain and to make sure all the replication and the offsets it's uh, working properly, especially when you face uh, problems, high load, or you need to uh, restart the clusters and things like that. Okay. Uh, there are other two uh, commercial features that are uh, quite new. They uh, they were uh, public uh, last year. One is multi-region uh, cluster, which is exactly uh, the capacity to replicate information between different clusters. Uh, again, it's not open source, it's part of the commercial offering from the main vendor. Uh, and it's exactly the same thing with the cluster linking, which is uh, allowing to have like a standby cluster uh, reading from an active uh, cluster. So both things are, are possible to have them with Kafka, uh, but are, they are kind of tricky and, and they are not really well integrated with uh, Kafka itself when we speak about the broker, okay? Um, oh, sorry. 
Um, last part of this is, uh, and I think it's also a nice feature, it's uh, uh, Pulsar is multi-tenant. That means in uh, one cluster, we can have uh, like uh, many spaces similar to Kubernetes spaces. So we can separate uh, topics uh, from a logical point of view, um, from a consumer and producer point of view, um, and manage those uh, language spaces independently. Kafka doesn't work like that. Uh, Kafka just have the topics. You can have, uh, and you should have uh, uh, SLA, SLAs and quotas uh, to separate them, but they don't work uh, as in an isolated way, or so isolated way as a uh, nine spaces does. Okay. So well, this is uh, tier storage and your replication. Let me check because I see some other questions. Yeah, Marcel, uh, that's a nice uh, question. I never use uh, Kafka Pulsar. Uh, it's a project launched uh, last year, I think. Uh, which is basically providing a Kafka, a protocol Kafka compatible uh, interface uh, for Pulsar. So you may uh, consume and produce to, uh, to Pulsar uh, as it, if it were, uh, as, uh, as it is with Kafka. So if you have a consumer or a producer which is uh, consuming or, produce, or producing to Kafka and you want to migrate to Pulsar, you can use this Kafka Pulsar to uh, to do that migration without affect the consumer or the producer. Okay, it's a project quite new. Uh, not sure how much it is. It seems interesting. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity yet to use it, and um, and it's a very important piece if you want to go with Pulsar because uh, sooner or later you are going to have a, a case when you need to have a Kafka interface. That's some of the nice things of Kafka. Many uh, commercial products out there are only compatible with Kafka. So you may need that in some point. With this uh, Kafka Pulsar connector, uh, you may uh, solve that particular situation. Okay. So excellent question. I didn't cover that because uh, I didn't think, uh, I don't think I, I, I will have time for that, but good question, Marcel, thank you. Let me see another question by Itamar. Yeah, are there uh, hosted solutions uh, for Pulsar? Uh, yes, for Pulsar you have, you can all, of course uh, deploy your own uh, Pulsar uh, cluster, uh, in virtual machines, in Kubernetes, and there are some uh, couple of vendors uh, providing uh, Pulsar as a service. So both things are uh, perfectly uh, possible. Uh, I, I would say Pulsar has uh, grown a lot in the last year. Um, now we have uh, some uh, pretty serious companies uh, providing Pulsar. So yeah, I think there is not a big uh, difference right now in terms of that. You can have uh, commercial support for both of them. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, probably Kafka is of course a lot more popular and there are more vendors, uh, but the, both of them have more than one vendor and, and that will be fine if you want to go uh, in that way. Okay, another question from Gonzalo. I haven't seen that Pulsar has also embedded registry. It is possible to have several schemas in the same topic. Uh, being completely honest, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I know there is a schema, of course, a, a, schema, um, a schema registry, but uh, I never test, I never try to put uh, several schemas in the same topic. Uh, and being honest, I wouldn't recommend to do that if you can avoid it. Okay, it is also the same thing with Kafka. You can do that with Kafka, but uh, in many cases you don't want to do that. Okay, it's just uh, make things a lot more complicated, and it's not like uh, Kafka works really. Kafka and Pulsar are designed to separate information per topic. It's not like MEQ where it's, things are simpler because you can do filtering and so on. Uh, so I always recommend try to avoid that. There are particular cases where uh, you can do that uh, because you need to, for example, if um, uh, aggregating information from several places, uh, so it's not so easy. Uh, but uh, it's almost always there are uh, a better solution that puts uh, different schemas 
in, in a topic, okay? Uh, and and yes, I don't know if you can do it in Pulsar. I, I thought, I think you, you are, but I never did. Okay, so let's uh, continue. Thank you for the questions. I wasn't expecting so many questions, but they are really, really good. So thank you very much. Uh, let's continue with the um, next uh, step, which is uh, MESA size. Uh, this is uh, kind of uh, fun because I didn't find that information easily. I have to ask to uh, a Pulsar expert. Uh, and for me, it's one of the main benefits of Pulsar over Kafka. Uh, uh, during my career, I have uh, many teams asking me um, about how to put uh, messages in Kafka, which are uh, bigger than uh, one megabyte. It's a typical problem I face, and Pulsar has some uh, very interesting uh, options for that. Uh, let me start from the beginning. The typical scenario of the ideal scenario for Kafka is when we have smaller, small messages. So around uh, one kilobyte, a lot of messages around one kilobyte. That's the perfect scenario for Kafka. The performance is uh, very good in that case because Kafka initially was designed exactly for that, okay, for small messages. Uh, it's going to do some internal batching uh, to be uh, very efficient and it works uh, very well. Uh, the limit it's one megabyte. So by default, if you try to uh, publish a message in Kafka which is uh, bigger than one megabyte, it, uh, the producer is going to uh, launch an exception. It is not going to allow you to do that. Okay. So one megabyte is just a quite big uh, size for um, messages in Kafka, uh, and by default you can do it. Okay. In the case of Pulsar, it's totally it's different. You can have uh, uh, messages uh, until uh, five megabytes by default, okay? So you can easily publish one megabyte messages in Pulsar, and you can grow uh, until five mega megabytes, which is a quite decent uh, size. Uh, that's a nice thing uh, to have, in my opinion. Uh, in Kafka, of course, you can change the configuration uh, to allow uh, bigger messages, uh, but it's kind of tricky. It's just not change the configuration, but probably you need to tweak also uh, the timeout in the cons in the producer and probably in the consumer and, and some other batch um, buffers and some other uh, low level tuning configurations in Kafka. Uh, and in, um, it's a configuration is going to affect the whole cluster. So yeah, you can do that. There are some people that are doing that, uh, but it's uh, not uh, ideal. Let me say it that way, okay? Uh, if you need to go with uh, bigger than five mega messages in Pulsar or in Kafka, you can just tweak the configuration to uh, allow them, okay? If they are not very common, so you have most of the messages from one kilobyte and then from time to time a very specific message of uh, five megabytes. Uh, in the case of Pulsar it's uh, more than five megabytes, in the case of Pulsar it's not going to be a problem, in the case of Kafka uh, depending on the size but uh, it's uh, uh, much more problematic. Okay. But uh, you can do it, okay, if you have uh, uh, sporadic uh, messages. If you have many messages of, let me say, 10 megabytes, so which are quite big, all of them, what you can do is uh, in Pulsar, uh, there is a feature in the producer and the consumer to automatically split the messages in uh, smaller uh, messages. So the, cons the producer is going to split them, is going to publish them in Pulsar and the consumer automatically is going to put them together again uh, to have the initial message. And, and you don't have to do anything, it's just a configuration, okay? That's the typical thing I uh, usually do or I usually recommend in Kafka, but you have to do it manually. You have to see the message and to, and to think, okay, this is my five megas uh, uh, message or JSON or whatever how we can split it uh, and, and send it independently uh, through Kafka, okay? With Pulsar, that's given to you automatically, if you want. And 
This is some of the patterns just for, compl for completion. The last pattern we have is we have very big files. Kafka ports are not ideal to put very big files. They're not designed for that. The typical pattern which I recommend is uh, to uh, write those big messages, those images or whatever, to an object storage, retrieve the URL, and write the URL in the message you send to Kafka or to Pursa. Okay, so you have all the your uh, event driving architecture, but you are not putting things which the broker don't, don't doesn't like. Okay, it's easier for everybody and it scales a lot better. Okay, but that depends a lot of of the case. It's not always possible. Okay, so. Uh, well, it's important to analyze uh, each use case to choose what is the best strategy uh, for, for that particular use case. Um, performance. Uh, this is like a big topic. Uh, performance, Kafka versus Pulsar. So you can go to uh, the benchmarks done by the Kafka community and they will tell you Kafka, it's, uh, the performance is a lot better. If you go to the Pulsar benchmark, they will tell you uh, Pulsar is uh, much better than Kafka. Uh, um, and it's kind of where because it's time the Pulsar guys go and tweak uh, the, the benchmark to make it better. And then the Kafka guys come back and tweak the, the Kafka to make it better again. Uh, in the end of the day, and um, for most of us, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Pulsar and Kafka, both of them are really performant, uh, really good things. Uh, if you compare them with a database, uh, they are excellent uh, regarding performance. Uh, so for most of us, which don't have very requirements, very, very special in terms of latency, and so on, uh, the performance is not going to be uh, so key. We, we are going to, uh, to succeed with both of them in terms of performance, in my opinion. If it's not your case, because sometimes there are very particular case, then the best thing you can do is do your own benchmarking for your own use case and, and see what happens, okay? Uh, it's not uh, so hard to do and it's the better approach. Uh, but for most of us, uh, probably you shouldn't choose between Pulsar or Kafka because of the performance, but because of uh, many of the other points we have covered and, and other points uh, regarding your uh, particular use case. Okay. Um, let's go with the last point, uh, community and open source. Uh, regarding community, uh, well, I will say community for most of the open source projects start uh, very, very open. Then le, the, it, it goes down uh, um, when the, you know, the late, uh, uh, the, 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 the most uh, people start to use it, then the, the, the community groups up again, right? So Pulsar, the community, it's just not somewhat so mature as Kafka. So it's really nice because you can just uh, speak to the core maintainers of Pulsar, ask them questions. They are going to answer you. They are going to ask you about your use cases. So the, 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 the level of support and you can have with the community, it's amazing. With Kafka, it's also really good. Uh, the, the, the thing with Kafka, it's a lot more mature. So you are going to have more people working from uh, for all the companies, from people who has been managing Kafka for years. Many of the things have, have been already discussed and, and they are not interesting anymore. So it's just kind of different. And both uh, communities are very nice. Kafka community is a lot bigger than the, the Pusha community. They are just different and depending what you are looking for, one may be uh, better than another one. But in my opinion, both of them are excellent. It's just they are in different uh, moments. Okay. Uh, regarding open source, it happens the same thing or very similar because Pursar is new and, and the adoption is low. Uh, Absolutely everything in Pulsar, as far as I know, it's open source, it's part of the Apache project, it has the Apache license. 
So you don't have to worry about that. When we speak about uh, Kafka, it's just different. Kafka itself, the broker and many components are part of the Apache Software Foundation, but there are other pieces around Kafka which are not part of the Apache Software Foundation and, and they are important pieces. So uh, we mentioned it before, uh, the, the, the schema, schema registry, Schema registry is not part of the Apache Software Foundation. It's uh, licensed by a specific vendor. Uh, so it shouldn't be a problem, but you uh, need to know it's not part of the Apache Software Foundation and it's a, a, a very, very important component. So, uh, and as that happened with the schema registry, happens with other components, uh, with the geo-replication components we see before and many other things, okay? The good thing about that is you have also many vendors um, and some nice features and, um, and some support uh, because of that, okay? So both of them are really good. Again, they are just in different moments. If the adoption grows a lot in Pulsar, we probably see the same uh, things happening, right? Well, that's what I think. So uh, what? That's uh, that's all uh, from my side. Let me check if there are some more questions. What about maturity on critical use cases? Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, I think both uh, solutions are quite good for critical use cases. But Kafka, because it's it's the the, the, the ecosystem is big is bigger and is uh, easier to to find people uh, with knowledge about Kafka. It's not easy, uh, but uh, it's easier than with Pulsar. Uh, probably for that particular case, uh, Kafka. If you don't want to be uh, very innovative and you want just to go with the majority, and then Kafka it's for you. Pulsar requires to be uh, to to have a different mindset. You are going to be an early adopter in in some way, um, and yes, it's not a big issue because there are big companies out there using Kafka or providing Kafka services, a big data boutique, uh, of course. But uh, but yes, in in general, uh, for uh, looking for maturity, yes, Kafka it's it's better. Good question, Sergio. Let me check another question. Wow, that's a huge uh, question. Michael, um, I'm not sure I can share that uh, with you here, but uh, if you have interest, just uh, send an email to, uh, to info at uh, Big Data Boutique and uh, I'm sure Itamak will be uh, happy to share all the details with you. I, I encourage you to do, to do that. Okay, Jose Enrique, uh, very interesting uh, question. How is the support for streams in Pulsar? Is anything similar to Kafka streams? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a, a very excellent uh, question. Uh, there are several answers to that. Uh, Pulsar has uh, a special component uh, called the Pulsar functions, which gives you uh, the capacity to do steam processing. So that's uh, perfectly possible. Okay. Um, the thing here, I'm probably but that depends on what you want to do. The Kafka streams, it's all, of course only for Kafka, uh, but there, there is not the only framework you can use. You can use also Fling, you can use Spark Studio Streaming. Uh, there, are, there is another Ask Me Anything session uh, speaking about the difference between them. So uh, the answer to this particular question is uh, yes, uh, there are several options in Pulsar that are well covered by Pulsar itself and by other uh, open source uh, frameworks. It's not going to be a big issue. Uh, and you're not going to uh, miss anything uh, from the streaming processing if you really want to go with a uh, Pulsar. So that shouldn't be uh, an issue. Okay, The support uh, from Flink, for example, is excellent. 
uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure you're not going to face any uh, particular limitation in that particular area. Um, okay, Gonzalo, it's answering the question. Thank you, Gulsar, uh, Gonzalo, Pulsar Fusions, yeah. Okay, uh, I think that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your time and um, for all the questions. Just uh, remember, if you have uh, particular questions or, or regarding Kafka or Pulsar, just uh, write to to Big Data Boutique, to Itamar, and they will help you. Uh, and that's all. Thank you very much and see you in the next uh, Ask Me Anything session. Bye-bye.